Hello students, in today's video we are going to discuss structure and location of thyroid gland, then uh, functions of thyroid hormone namely thyroxin that is T4 and triiodothyronin that is T3. We will also study regulation of secretion of T3 and T4 and in addition to this we are going to learn about disorders of thyroid gland. Thyroid gland is the largest endocrine gland in the human body. Now look at this figure. It shows the location and structure of the thyroid gland. Thyroid gland is butterfly shaped and it consists of two lobes. The two lobes are connected to each other by a central tissue that is called as isthmus. Now thyroid gland is located in the region of the neck. Now as you can see in this figure, uh, this is trachea and uh, trachea is a windpipe. Now thyroid gland wraps or covers the trachea or the windpipe from both the sides and the thyroid gland is present just below the larynx. So this is the larynx or the voice box and this is the thyroid gland. Uh, now look at this figure. Now if we look at the microscopic structure of the thyroid gland, thyroid gland is composed of uh, spherical follicles. So these are the spherical follicles and these spherical follicles are made up of cuboidal epithelium. So these are the cuboidal cells. Now these cuboidal cells secrete a sticky fluid called as colloid and this colloid fills the central cavity of these follicles. Now thyroid hormones namely T3 and T4 are produced by these follicles. Now between the follicles are present parafollicular C cells. Now these parafollicular C cells secrete another hormone called as calcitonin. Now thyroid hormone is highly vascular and it is richly supplied with the blood vessels. So you can see these blood capillaries over here. So the thyroid gland produces three hormones namely T3, T4 and calcitonin. Now follicular cells secrete tetraiodothyronin, also called as thyroxin. Now as it consists of 4 iodine it is referred to as T4. Then triiodothyronin it consists of 3 iodine and it is termed as T3. Now T4 and T3 are collectively termed as thyroid hormone. Now T4 is inactive while T3 is active form of the thyroid hormone. 80% of the thyroid hormone is produced as T4 while only 20% is produced as T3. However, in the body, this inactive T4 is converted to uh, active T3. Now, T3 is produced by the removal of one iodine atom from T4. The process is called as deiodination. Now, deiodination occurs primarily in the liver and kidneys. Now, primary function of T3 and T4 is to regulate the basal metabolic rate of the body and these are therefore required for the growth and development of the body. Now, parafollicular cells secrete calcitonin. Now, main function of calcitonin hormone is to regulate the blood calcium levels. Now let's understand regulation of secretion of thyroid hormone uh, that is T3 and T4. Now release of T3 and T4 into the blood is controlled by thyroid stimulating hormone TSH secreted by the anterior pituitary. Secretion of TSH in turn is regulated by thyrotropin releasing hormone that is TRH secreted by hypothalamus. Now, secretion of TRH is stimulated by factors like uh, exercise, stress, malnutrition, low blood glucose, exposure to cold, etc. So, these factors like for example, low blood glucose or stress stimulates hypothalamus. Hypothalamus releases TRH. TRH further stimulates anterior pituitary to release TSH. TSH further stimulates thyroid gland to release T3 and T4 and this increases blood levels of T3 and T4. Now T3 and T4 are utilized by the body cells. So this again reduces blood levels of T3 and T4. Now very important to understand whenever blood levels of uh, T4 and T3 increase in the blood, 
These increased blood levels send negative feedback signals or inhibitory signals to hypothalamus as well as the anterior pituitary. And this inhibits the release of TRH, TSH and further this reduces the secretion of T4 and T3. Thereby, the increased blood levels of T4 and T3 come back to normal. Similarly, if the levels of these thyroid hormone reduce in the blood, these reduced blood levels send positive feedback signals or stimulatory signals to hypothalamus asking hypothalamus to increase the release of TRH. This further increases uh, secretion of TSH that further increases secretion of T3 and T4 so that the reduced blood levels of T3 and T4 could be increased and thereby they could be brought back to normal. So this is how uh, secretion of T3 and T4 from the thyroid gland is regulated by the blood levels of T3 and T4. Now let's understand physiological functions of T3 and T4. Now T3 and T4 regulate metabolism and control functions of every body cell. Now very important to understand that during metabolic processes oxygen is consumed and energy and heat are released. Now the first, first function of uh, T3 and T4 is calorie genesis. Calorie genesis means production of heat. Now most important function of uh, T3 and T4 is to regulate basal metabolic rate. So first we should understand what is this basal metabolic rate. Now basal metabolic rate is the amount of energy required by the body at rest to maintain vital functions of the body like uh, functioning of the heart, functioning of lungs, kidneys etc. Now this energy is derived by burning calories. Now when calories in food are burnt, energy and heat is generated. So T3 and T4 are calorie genic as they burn calories and produce heat. So T3 and T4 increase basal metabolic rate thereby they also increase oxygen consumption and heat production. Now since these hormones control heat production they regulate temperature of the body. Now second important function of uh, T3 and T4 is the growth and development. Now as T3 and T4 regulate basal metabolic rate they are essential for normal growth and development of the body especially development of nervous system. Now deficiency of T3 and T4 produces mental retardation in infants and children while in adults their deficiency leads to impairment of intelligence. T3 and T4 regulate metabolism of carbohydrates, proteins and fats. Now, T3 and T4 stimulate carbohydrate metabolism. Now, T3 and T4 stimulate breakdown of glycogen and breakdown of proteins to produce glucose. And uh, T3 and T4 increase utilization of glucose by the body cells. Now, when we talk about protein metabolism, certain proteins are synthesized but a uh, majority of proteins are broken down to amino acids and these amino acids are used to synthesize glucose which is used as energy source. Now uh, in addition to this T3 and T4 increase lipolysis as well as they also increase lipogenesis. So lipids are broken down as well as lipids are synthesized. So on one hand Lipids are broken down to free fatty acids. So plasma levels of free fatty acid increase and these free fatty acids are used as energy source. While on the other hand, T3 and T4 also increase lipogenesis. So more cholesterol is synthesized. But majority of this cholesterol is uh, uh, converted to bile acids. So 
uh, there is increased production of bile acids. So this lipolysis and lipogenesis regulate cholesterol levels in the blood. Now T3 and T4 also increase heart rate. They increase contractility and this increase in the force of contraction of the heart muscles and increase in the heart rate increases the cardiac output. Thus hyperthyroidism leads to tachycardia that is heartbeat at rest more than 100 beats per minute while hypothyroidism causes bradycardia that is heartbeat at rest less than 60 beats per minute. Uh, next T3 and T4 regulate development of uh, skeletal muscles, their contraction and regeneration. Now T3 and T4 also regulate gastrointestinal motility. Thus hypothyroidism leads to constipation while hyperthyroidism is associated with diarrhea. Now thyroid hormones also facilitate process of erythropoiesis that is formation of red blood cells. Now in addition to this, Normal thyroid function is required for the maintenance of pregnancy and lactation. So these are the main functions of uh, T3 and T4. Now very important to understand that the steady amounts of uh, thyroid hormone are constantly released in the blood. However, if more energy is required, for example, during pregnancy or we say during cold, that is a winter season, then at that time, more T3 and T4 are produced and secreted in the blood. Now, let's talk about the abnormal secretions of uh, thyroid hormone uh, during hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism. Now, hyperthyroidism is caused due to increase that is much more than required secretion of T3 and T4. While hypothyroidism is caused due to the deficiency or reduced secretion of T3 and T4. Now, as the thyroid hormone regulate basal metabolic rate, basal metabolic rate increases in hyperthyroidism. That is, basal metabolic rate increases excessively in hyperthyroidism much more than required. While the basal metabolic rate reduces in hypothyroidism. Now, excessive rise in basal metabolic rate causes increased breakdown of calories, causing weight loss and increased appetite. On the contrary, reduced basal metabolic rate causes reduced breakdown of calories, causing weight gain and anorexia, that is reduced appetite. Then anxiety, physical restlessness, mental excitability are seen during hyperthyroidism, whereas depression, psychosis, mental slowness and lethargy, that is tiredness are observed during hypothyroidism. Now, hyperthyroidism causes hair loss, while dry hair and brittle hair, that is the hair that break easily, are seen during hypothyroidism. Now, as the thyroid hormone regulate heart rate, hyperthyroidism causes tachycardia, that is heartbeat at rest increases to more than 100 beats per minute. While hypothyroidism can cause bradycardia and heartbeat at rest falls to less than 60 beats per minute. Now, heat generation increases in hyperthyroidism and thus the body tries to cool itself or dissipate itself by producing sweat and so the skin becomes warm and sweaty uh, and uh, in addition to this excessive heat can cause heat intolerance on the contrary heat uh, generation reduces in hypothyroidism causing dry cold skin temperature of the body can also fall and it can go below normal leading to hypothermia now, in hyperthyroidism, gastrointestinal motility increases and can cause diarrhea. While in hypothyroidism, GI motility decreases and can cause constipation. Now, hyperthyroidism is caused due to Graves' disease 
or toxic nodular goiter. Now, Graves disease is an autoimmune disease of the thyroid gland where thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins or thyroid stimulating antibodies are produced. Now, these antibodies continuously stimulate thyroid gland to secrete more and more T4 and T3. Now, another cause of uh, hyperthyroidism is a toxic nodular goiter. Now, goiter means enlargement of the thyroid gland. So, there is enlargement of the thyroid gland. Now, in addition to this, a few cells of the thyroid gland grow in size and they form a lump or a nodule. Now, this nodule produces excessive T3 and T4. So, Graves disease and toxic nodular goiter are the main causes of hyperthyroidism. Now, the main causes of uh, hypothyroidism are Hashimoto thyroiditis and inadequate dietary iodine. Now, as we all know, iodine is essential for the synthesis of thyroid hormone. So, deficiency of iodine in diet can cause reduced synthesis of T3 and T4 leading to hypothyroidism. Now, Hashimoto thyroiditis is an autoimmune disease where body's own immune response that is activated T cells and B cells destroy thyroid cells. Now progressive increased destruction of thyroid cells causes hypothyroidism. Now let's study in brief main important uh, disorders of uh, hypothyroidism. Now hypothyroidism in neonates, children and in infants is called as cretinism. It leads to retarded physical growth and mental development. Now, hypothyroidism in adults is called as myxoedema. The skin of the patient appears swollen and puffy and the patient also lacks intelligence and initiator. Now, in addition to this, deficiency of dietary iodine reduces synthesis of T3 and T4. Now, reduce T3 and T4 stimulate increased secretion of TSH. So, TSH continuously stimulate the thyroid gland and this causes enlargement of thyroid gland in an attempt to make more and more T3 and T4 as there is deficiency. So, this condition is called as non-toxic goiter. Goiter means enlargement of the thyroid gland. So, this is in brief on the functions, regulation of secretion of T3 and T4 and disorders of thyroid gland. If you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.